costume? Welcome back. It's Erin, the Two Martini Stitcher, and I'm back for another weekly stitching update. Um, if you're new here and stumbled upon this channel, it's a channel about cross stitch. So we're going to talk about all kinds of cross stitch today. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you back for another week. Today is Wednesday, November 27th. November 27th. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving here in the U.S. So we're going to jump right into it because I have a lot of stuff to show you guys. I might try to get this uploaded and uh, published tonight, but it I, this might be a long one. So settle in, grab a cocktail. Today's cocktail, mm, I have a little sip. The husband is home and uh, he took the day off work today. He took a day off work and then spent all morning cleaning up leaves in the back and went to Costco and did the Costco run for me. He's a gem. That's what he does with his days off. But he also made happy hour. And uh, I think I had mentioned before that we got, we get a cool like monthly cocktail subscription thing and it sends you stuff to do different kind of fun cocktails. But we always kind of do them together. So I don't normally have them for my cross stitch happy hour. But today we have a Submariner's Gimlet delicious and I'm going to show you it's really good and this is the one that we've been getting recently it's from shaker and spoon and they send you not the booze but they tell you like what kind to use and there's usually a theme but it comes with like you get the recipe and you get all the fun like this one calls for seaweed bay laurel lime cordial um, a special kind of aromatic bitters and a bay leaf, and some of them even have way fancier stuff than that. Um, they're delicious. They're really fun. You get a box full of like super fancy. You feel like a like a mixologist. Anyway, so that's I'm showing this to you guys because I think that this would be if you have someone in your life who enjoys cocktails or doing kind of fun different drinks. This would be an excellent like a three month subscription of this would be an excellent gift. And I think you can. I know that you can do it as like a gift card, like you can send a gift subscription and then they sign in and activate it whenever they want to activate it. So um, it's really easy to do as a gift. So that's it, shaker and spoon. And I'm having the Submariner's Gimlet. Did I say Submariner's before? I might have. Submariner's Gimlet. And it's really good. And we're gonna, so now I'm gonna show you all the things and there's lots and lots to talk about and show today because I was a finishing machine this past weekend. Uh, but I'm going to do all that, maybe hopefully kind of quickly if I'm talking kind of fast, because I got cooking to do. <laughs> Everybody else have cooking and prepping to do? I try to do as much cooking and prepping the day before Thanksgiving as I do on Thanksgiving so I don't spend all day cooking and I can hang with the family a little bit. So. First things first, I said welcome, all that good stuff. Um, I'm gonna do a little Q&A because there were a lot of questions and there was just a lot of good stuff in the comments this week, guys. I love our group here. I love the whole Cross Stitch community and how helpful everybody is. Someone had asked a question and I must have not seen it when the comment came through. And a couple of people jumped in and helped out. Um, it was a question about D stash, like where do you find like stash unload sites? I am on stash unload. I think it's called stash unload, or is it stash unloading? I'm gonna look real quick. Uh, on Facebook, it's called stash unload, and it's a group on Facebook. I know that there are multiple different stash unload groups on Facebook, so that's the first place to start. Um, also, Instagram. Uh, quite a few people destash on Instagram, so that's just a matter of like just being. You could search destash and probably find people's. Um, but also, just watch watch people's stories because a lot of times other stitchers will share in their stories uh, some of the things that I have to show that came in um, in stash enhancement this week was from Cheryl the Wayside. Stitcher did a de-stash and I only knew about her de-stash account and that she was de-stashing a bunch of things because I saw some other people post about it. In that same vein, t 
today, uh, my friend Annie, the joy filled stitcher started her D stash and she's D stashing a bunch of stuff over the holiday weekend. So I will link that below. Um, but you could go check her out because she's got a lot of good stuff. It's joy dot fill dot d stash on instagram so you can go check her out um i'm telling you because i already claimed a couple things that i want but she still has lots more coming especially fabric and she gets lots of good fabric she has a good fabric stash so check her out also check out her floss too i think that we were maybe separated at birth we would Definitely be like besties if we lived in the same town. If you like watching me, you will love watching Annie. She is a hoot. She stitches all kinds of fantastic projects and is super upbeat. Uh, she's joy filled stitcher and she's super close to 500 subscribers and is going to do a big giveaway. Well, I don't know about big giveaway. I shouldn't like over hyper giveaway. She's doing a fun giveaway at 500 and she's super close. So pop over, subscribe to her channel, check out her D-Stash. There is my D-Stash advice and your pocketbook may not thank me, but you might. <laughs> so that was one of the first questions we got. Um, second, I got so much good advice about uh, crushed walnut shells, that it's an excellent filler. Uh, but the big advice that I got that I totally took is that it is also used as reptile bedding. And so I was able to buy a big, big bag for not a lot of money on Amazon. So if you put in like walnut shells reptile or uh, walnut, shells, walnut shells lizard, you'll get the crushed walnut shells that is sold as bedding. Because this is kind of like, kind of like a pink washing thing. You guys know about pink washing, right? Where like, it's the same razor, like the same disposable razors that are men's and women's. It's the same razor, but one is just pink or blue or pretty and packaged for women. And then they charge you twice as much, but it's the same razor. That's what I kind of feel like these walnut shells are because you can buy a little bag that's like three cups that is marketed as for filling pin cushions to crafters. Or you can buy a huge bag that's marketed as reptile bedding. <laughs> So there you go. I will link below the one that I got uh, off of Amazon. And um, yes, so crushed walnut shells. Um, I also got a reminder for somebody, which I knew, but it's always, reminders are always good that if you're going to fill with that or even sawdust, you need to put some fusible interfacing behind your stitching so that that doesn't come through your linen or Ada. Um, so I did, I did do that and you guys will see that. Uh, what else did we get? Oh, I had a question about the Harry, the fabric I'm using for Harry Potter book cover. So I'll talk about that when I show it. Also, I got asked how I count my stitches, which is a good question because I, and I've gotten that question before I use an app. I'm going to show you the one that I use. I use an app on my phone. I use, I have an Android. This is what the icon looks like. It just says counter. But if you look, there's a ton of free apps in the Play Store that are like counter apps. And then if you open it up, you can see that it's just like a click counter. Like you just click one, you know, I'm not gonna back that up one too. Um, so you just click, 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 click. So what I do is as I'm stitching, like if I finish a like motif, then I'll count that up. Or if I finish like a color in a section, I'll count, but like wherever it makes sense, to me that like I've finished that section, then I count that section. And you can kind of eyeball, like if I know that I need to do 100 stitches or 250 stitches, like you kind of know from the grid like how much you need to do. Does that make sense? If it's something like a border, I will use a highlighter and I'll highlight what I've counted because I might not remember. So I sometimes will highlight what I've done and counted so that then when I keep going, I know what I've already counted. But mostly I'm like, you know, I'm going to do this little bird or I'm going to do whatever. Um, so that's how I count. And then I just click like ding, 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 ding. I mean, sometimes you can count like, you know, you know, if, especially if it's a border, you know, each section is however many stitches and you can multiply it. And um, with this, you can just, if you just tap on it, you can just enter a number. Um, but I like this one because one, you can have a whole bunch and you can even have like multiple lists 
two, and um, you can put a picture so I know which one I'm counting for. So you can have multiple going at the same time. So that's what, how I count my stitches. Uh, I know people use paper. Uh, you, some people use an actual physical click counter. Um, I just use the app. So that's how I count stitches. And then uh, the last question I had, and this was a genius question, because I think it went to the heart of what I, like part of my conundrum, I guess, with using a professional finisher, which also, I should say, because when I listened back to my video last week, because I listened to it to make sure that I am putting everything in the show notes that I tell you I'm going to link below. Uh, when I was listening to it back, I realized it may have sounded like I thought a professional finisher would judge my stitching. And I don't think that like this is fully in my head. I mean, especially because I said Jolyn by name, like I do not think that Jolyn or any finisher would be judging, like would be judgy about my work because honestly, I have never met a more encouraging and welcoming and helpful group of people in my entire life as I have met in the cross stitch community. So I absolutely don't think that any finisher would be like judging my work and be like, mm. That's kind of shoddy. Like, I don't, it's fully in my head <laughs> that my work is maybe not good enough to like for other people to see, which is silly because I'm clearly going to display it in my house. I think it looks nice. That's fully in my head. But something that a commenter had asked, and I think also got to the heart of it, was like, she was saying, I don't have a local needle workshop with a finisher. And so I would need to like hire someone who I've not met and doesn't live near me. And so she had some questions about how that, how do you do that? Like, how do you reach out to them? How, what do you like? Is there an etiquette to it? Do you give them a budget? Do you tell them how you want it finished? Or do you say, finish it however you want? Um, and, and those are, I exactly like, I don't even know how I've, here, take this. Like, do I say I want it as a pillow? Do I say you do whatever you think it should be? Do you give them a budget? Like, how does any of that work? I don't know. Like, I don't know. However, I'm going to reach out to some um, more experienced people who have used finishers, many finishers in other states. And I'm going to very sweetly ask them to maybe do a floss tube at some point, kind of like a tutorial on how to connect with a finisher and how that relationship works and maybe questions you should ask. All those things. What do we think? Would that be helpful? That would be so helpful for me. So I'm assuming it would be helpful for other people and I will see if I can pull some strings with some friends to get those questions answered for us. What do we think? Good idea? Hmm. Okay, so that's Q&A. It's been 13 and a half minutes, and I haven't showed you a single thing of stitching yet. I'm going to do that now because, guys, we're going to start with finishes because I was a finishing machine over the weekend. See, all I had to do was put it out there, and I know some other people jumped on and joined me. I know it was totally last minute uh, International Floss Tube FFO weekend that I hijacked. But mainly I put it out there because I figured if I announced I was doing it, I would actually get my rear end gear and do it. <laughs> it worked. So I have four FFOs to show you guys. So I'm gonna start with the smallest, kind of least exciting one. I should have brought the frame up. So the first thing I FFO'd was my winter ABC, Lizzie Kate ABC. And this hangs on just like, it's a little pedestal with a, with a, like a clipboard clip frame that's white that goes in my powder room and I've been switching these out seasonally. Uh, so here's all done. So I just flat folded it and I, I did these with, with a uh, tape. I didn't, I didn't lace that. So that's just a flat fold. I did put like one layer of batting underneath it. And then this is just matte board with some fabric and this, okay, this is a tip that I had picked up from somebody else. I'm sorry, I can't remember who gave the tip, was that when you have a stripe, rather than trying to line it up, 
and get the the stripe going. I think it was Helen. Helen, was it you that said this? I feel like it was. But that you do it on an angle, so that way it doesn't really matter if the stripes go completely straight. Ta-da! And it looks like a present. It totally looks like a little present. And then this is that felt that felt die cut rickrack that I got off of Amazon. So there we go. Lizzie Kate Winter ABCs. I'm gonna hang that up right there. Boom. Look, my little board is filling up. Okay, so that's the first one. The second was actually a stitchy finish. I worked on this over the weekend. Uh, last weekend, I finished up homework and then decided that rather than start another extra credit, year seven extra credit, because I'm on, I'm in a really good place with the year seven extra credit, I decided that I would just finish up that ornament for my parents. And so I did. So I got that all, I finished stitching it and I finished it. Are you guys ready? Guys, I'm unreasonably proud of all my finishes this weekend. So I finished stitching it, and this is from this year's uh, Just Cross Stitch Christmas Ornament Magazine. So there it is, and I did end up using the Krynik, um, and it's a number eight braid, which I think might be just a little, this is 16 count black Ada, and I used the called for DMC. I actually used a different skin tone, just because I didn't have what was called for and this looked close enough. And then maybe Jesus' hair was called for like this dark plum. Oh, it's dark plum hair, so I just picked a brown. <laughs> it was all of like five stitches, so I figured it was fine. Chronic braid. So this is 16 count Ada, and all I had was um, number eight braid, which I think is really more for like 14 count which makes sense because I had bought it for Stiach that I was doing on 14 count. Uh, it worked just fine. I actually didn't even mind working with it. I used short lengths, it was just fine. I have to say, I don't think the stitches lay maybe as nice as the cotton floss, but it's okay. And it was, I, it is a little tight, but it didn't bother me, it was fine. And so it's a little more, I don't, you probably can't see. Let's see, can you see? It's a little raised, like it's it's definitely a little more raised than the cotton stitching, but I figured since it was their halos, it was okay. I think it came out really nice. Uh, I just did this uh, as a flat fold, and I used, I didn't, I didn't lace it, because it's just a little ornament, so I just used that sticky tape that I bought a while ago. Uh, it was recommended on Kathy Haberman. She has some good tutorials. She has a tutorial about finishing and she showed this like stitcher's tape or sticky tape. I'll link it below. I got it from Amazon and it's, you know, acid-free archival, archival tape. So that's what I used to just finish it on a piece of mat board. And then I just taped a piece of that felt on the back with a little ribbon, little ribbon hanger. And then I made this cording, guys, with the Krynik and like one of the colors of DNC and the Krynik. Look at that. I made that. I made it using Vana Pfeiffer's tutorial. Um, I will link her channel below because her tutorials are amazing. They're so good. She is a gem because she's a professional finisher, but then shows you how to do it all yourself. Like that is to me just to take the time to do that, to show other people her expertise. That is just so generous and wow. So she has one on how to make cording. And she uses this little cording winder, which I don't have, uh, but I'm going to get one. Hmm, that's going on my Christmas list. She had to use a little cording winder. Uh, I used a drill, <laughs> power drill. Uh, which you kind of need an extra pair of hands, I feel like, if you're using the drill, because it's heavy. But my daughter helped me, so. So there we go. So there is finish number two. Their little ornament. Yeah, hang this one up too. Boom. I'm so pleased with how that came out just adorable and those were really easy and quick to finish okay finish number three are you guys ready 
This is the one that I was so unreasonably proud of. I showed everyone in my family and they were like, yeah, that's really cute, mom. What do you, what do, you do with it? I'm like, it sits in a little bowl because it's adorable. I finished plum pudding. There we go. And I do wish, I did fill this with walnut shells. I wish I had filled it a little bit more. Like it seemed really well filled, um, but I, you know what? It's fine, because it's gonna sit in a little bowl, but look. And I did go with the brown velvet. So there it is. So I just used some fusible interfacing. I put some fusible interfacing on the stitching. And then I machine sewed, you know, three and most of the four side, turned it out, hand stitched up the closure, and then hand stitched on this chenille trim. And the trim is from Lady.Creates. I brought it over. It is Ogden Grass. So that's the trim. And like, I already used this, and there's plenty more in there. So um, I bought this at Acorns and Threads. However, I, I know that there's other, one, I know that Lady Dot has her own Etsy store or website. I'll find it, link it below. Uh, Lindy Stitches carries quite a bit, especially the mini palm. She did a tutorial on, on hand sewing on a pillow, the pom-pom trim. She did it as a live on, I think, just Cross Stitch Magazine's Facebook page. I will find that and link it below because it was really like even watching that I felt like oh I can do the chenille no problem and she loves their her, the lady dot mini palm and I think she has some of the lace and maybe some of the chenille trim too so Lindy stitches kitten stitcher I know carries it so there's lots of places you can get these and it comes in a ton of different colors uh, and the mini palm uh, palm trim too which I would like to get so but there we go, you guys. It came out so good. Here, can I hold it this way so you can see the stitching? Like it, it's just, it's so adorable. I, I'm, I'm so pleased with it. So this is gonna go on my buffet. We have a, we have a basket that I usually just put like random glass ornaments in, but this will be the first little cross stitch small in there. Hopefully it will fill up over the years, but I'm just so pleased with that. Okay, and then uh, the last one. Oh my gosh, you guys. I wasn't even sure I was gonna get this one done for today, but I did, I finished it up this morning. I finished it up this morning. And this is also Ivana tutorial on doing a stand-up flat fold. I watched the whole tutorial all the way through once, and then I literally had my phone there and did it with her step-by-step. Totally doable. She breaks it down so easy. And I did be thankful. Look at this, guys. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, <gasps> and it totally like it sits up perfectly. Ooh. And then I made that cording as well. Just like she shows in the tutorial. I, I did because I didn't want I didn't want a big bow or anything because the stitching itself is kind of busy with everything in the buttons. But look at that. This is going on our buffet tomorrow for Thanksgiving. I am just so I am just so stinking pleased with myself. Look at it. And it was totally doable, you guys. She tells you exactly what you need. I bought mat board from Amazon, I'll link uh, below. I think you can probably get a little cheaper. She talks about going to frame stores and getting blanks. And it's not mat board, it's backing board. So it doesn't have the texture, it's a little cheaper. But I got a bunch of sheets for what I felt was a very reasonable price from Amazon. So I got those and I got the walnut shells. I think that's it. I think that's all I, I had to get. But there you go. The cording does take quite a bit of DMC, but it's DMC. So, uh, and then it just totally matches. Look at that. Okay, have we thoroughly admired the stand-up flat fold? Oh, and this, because you, she says to use like um, satin ribbon, but this 
was uh, some twill tape that came on some packaging on something else I had purchased. I think like some flower sack towels or something. And I thought, well, that would be useful for making little bows. It was a little lighter. So I tea coffee dyed it. It was like an ivory. But look at me, like reduce, reuse, recycle. Upcycled the packaging, twill tape. It's perfect. I just, I just want... Is there a way that it can be in the whole video with me? I'm just so happy. Okay, so those are my finishes. <laughs> ah! Do you die? I'm so pleased with myself. So if you have not done your own finishing, I say go for it. I say go for it. I have very rudimentary sewing skills or any of it, but seriously, I will link Fauna's channel below. Amazing tutorials. Uh, and you can tell she has ones for doing the pin pillows, which I didn't watch because it's just, it's like a little pillow. Like my sewing skills do go as far as, you know, straight stitch around. I know put wrong sides together and turn it out. That's pretty much all you need to know to do a pillow. Uh, but her flat fold cording, she has ornament tutorials. She has doing like stand ups, all kinds of stuff. Check her out wealth of information. So I'm going to do the giveaway here since it was for finishing stuff. So many people responded. Um, it seems universally us stitchers prefer to stitch than finish. Mm -hmm. But most people seem to do it on their own. And I was surprised what a hit this one. I'm like so glad I offered this up as a giveaway. So the giveaway for last week was to get one of each of these colors. So they came in a pack of two. And so the winner is going to get one of each of these colors and uh, they're great. They're great for the backs of ornaments. Everybody said these are, they're not a hundred percent felt or wool, wool. They're wool felt, but they're not a hundred percent wool, but I think they're probably still sturdy enough to sew. It seemed like everybody said your corners might not be super crisp if you were to back a pillow with the felt, but if you're putting a trim on, then it's, that's pretty forgiving. Um, anyway. So that's what the giveaway for last week was. And I had, look at this. I'm just doing things all out of order. What's happening today? I had 88 people talk to me about their finishing. That's awesome. I love every single comment. I read every single one. I can't personally respond to every single one. I just, I don't have the time, but I read every single comment so that I can put your name on a list. I could use the whole YouTube comment or thing, but this way I just type them out. As I read every single person's comments, I try to respond to as many as I can. Um, but just know I love, love your comments. Um, so random number generator, one to 88. So one to 88, and the winner is 36. So 36 is Doreen Deskins. Doreen, you win. You win the felt. Yay. So hit me up with your email. Or not your email. I mean, yes, email me your address. My email, Instagram is below. And uh, I will get that felt out in the mail to you so you can do some finishing too. Uh, this week's giveaway, I'm going to go ahead and do right now too. Going to announce what that is. So... Um, this week's giveaway, since I am like totally done and FFO'd plum pudding, and it's my favorite thing, it's soft too. Like seriously, it's one of my favorite things ever right now. I want to do mice in the sewing room now so badly. <laughs> okay, anyhow, I'm going to pass the stash on plum pudding. So, uh, next week's winner is going to get plum pudding, and when I was cutting it out of that huge piece of linen, there was just enough on the other side to do it, so I'm gonna include a piece. This is r and R. I I think it's Old Town Blend. I'm pretty sure that's what I decided it was, was Old Town Blend. Uh, and it's enough to do that, it's 36 count, and it's enough to do your own little plum pudding, if you want. So that's gonna be the giveaway, and uh, let's see. Just tell me you want to stitch plum pudding. That's it. Just say I want to stitch plum pudding and I will enter you in the giveaway for plum pudding. Yay! Okay, now you guys want to see what I worked on this week? I actually stitched. 
not finished, actually stitched, right? Okay, first thing is uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter book covers, here it is, guys. So work my way, that's the horn. That's the unicorn horn. I haven't quite, you can kind of see, see these few blue stitches? That's the very beginning, kind of like halo-y around the unicorn. He's coming, he's coming. There we go. There is my progress. This is the bottom of the page. There it is. That's the bottom of the page. We're already to the top of the page, like reach the end here. So now it's just filling it in over oh, like two more weeks. I don't know, it seems like a lot. One, two, three, four. I don't know, maybe two. Well, it might be three more weeks before this page finish. But that's the horn of the unicorn. Okay, so I had been asked about this fabric. So this is 18 count. Is it called Easy Grid? Easy Grid? Easy Count? Oh, I will link it below. I bought it from 123 Stitch. I will link it below. You can get it. So it's pre printed, it has the grid 10 by 10 printed on it, and then it washes out. I've not ever done that, but this is what everybody says, is that you soak it in hot water and that grid line comes out when you're done. So the, so the key is you cannot do something on this that's an over dyed floss or silk because you have to wash it to get the grid out. But this is all DMC, good to go. And you can get it in different counts. I have 25 count um, easy grid. It's easy grid or easy count. Uh, I have 25 count of it that I'm going to be doing farewell to anger on. I know there's 20 count. I think there's 28 count with the, that's pre-gridded. They sell it at one, two, three stitch. They sell it also on heaven and earth designs. I know they carry it because lots of people do their hates on it. So, so that's the fabric and that's how easy grid works. <laughs> Supposedly we'll find out in a couple years when I actually wash that. So there we go. So I worked on that. Um, oh, this is not really stitchy related, but I brought it up to show you guys because over the weekend when I was done with all of my homework and such, I was working on the Mary and Jesus ornament and I was working on Harry Potter, but I also started working on bobbinating everything for Farewell to Anger. So I'm gonna show you guys because somebody had said like, show us your progress. So this is my uh, floss buddy from Bags Plus. So I custom ordered this. It is a 90, is it a 96, 98? I think it's a 98 pocket plus pro. So it's got some pockets, a couple of big pockets in the front. So you can keep your like floss key. So that's Farewell to Anger that I'm starting on January 1st. And then It'll hold all of your colors. Oh, I'm really close to being done, guys. So the first night I just labeled all the bobbins and then I started bobbinating. So there we go. So you can see I still have some to do. And then in the back, it's got extra pockets for like scissors and highlighters. And I think it's got this, like if you wanna clip scissors or whatnot in there, so. There we go. So this is from Bags Plus. I will link her Facebook page or her Etsy shop. She has an Etsy shop, but she also does, um, Michelle Bendy is the US distributor. You can order directly from uh, Karina. She's in the UK. So shipping can be a little spendy. This was not cheap. I will tell you that this was not cheap, but I felt like for this project that is gonna take me years and years, it was worth it to have it all organized and easy to see and pull my flosses. I thought this would be nicer than a floss box. So, so there we go. So there's my progress on bobbinating. Farewell to anger. Get, I'm like so ready. I'm so excited and so ready to start this. It's um, a New Year's start. We are flying back from our vacation on the first. So I don't know if I will actually put a stitch in. I might put one stitch in because that's going to be a long travel day. Uh, but. If not, then it will get started on January 2nd. So there we go. So I worked a lot on that, so I felt like I had to show you. And somebody had asked when I had first showed that. Someone said, give us bobbinating progress. There you go. 
I actually don't mind it too much. Like in the evenings when I'm like kind of done stitching, like I've reached whatever goal or I've finished my block on Harry Potter. If there was still like some left of the show that I was watching, I would just do a little more bobbinating. It's not terrible if you do it a little bit at a time. Okay. And then this week, new homework came out for School of Magical Stitches and also for Enchanted Stitching. And on Monday, I should have been doing work or getting ready for the holiday, but instead, <laughs> I drove over to the Kitsap Peninsula to have a late lunch and stitching date with the Kitsap Stitchers. So there's a group of ladies over on the peninsula, over on the Olympic Peninsula, that uh, get together every Monday night and stitch. Uh, Becca Sombre Stitches is kind of, I don't, I don't know if she's really like the leader of the gang, but <laughs> she's the one who I always see posting about the event. And so I had just messaged her and said, hey, I think I'm going to drive around. It's about a two hour drive, but they were so awesome. They said, come over early and we'll do lunch. Fantastic group. They're so fun. Uh, and um, they are doing a sow. They're doing a stitch along together of Emily's house. So I will show you Emily's house. So I took mine over to start with them. I was like, this is a real good excuse to start Emily's house. So here it is, Emily's house by Lindy Stitches. And I bought the whole kit and caboodle from her when she had the set with the Mamali bag and the gentle arts and the chart. So there it is. And I got a start on it on Monday night while I was with them. And I'm using this for something that makes me cry in Enchanting Stitches because I love the saying on this. Have you guys seen this? It says, speak for those who cannot speak for themselves for the rights of all who are destitute. Which, I, that just gets me in all the feels. And so, kind of makes you cry. I think about all the injustices of the world. I am stitching this on a 36 count Drapel Brown that I bought from Kitten Stitcher from Shakespeare's Peddler. Shakespeare's Peddler, uh, which is Teresa Kitten Stitcher <laughs> owns it. She's on floss tube as Kitten Stitcher. And I think it doesn't say who this is by. It's either Dames of the Needle or x Designs. I'll find out. But here's where I got to on that. So this is one of the instances where I'm going to stitch the whole border first because quite a few people when we had the whole border conversation said Emily's house border could trip you up. <laughs> so maybe do that one first. So I got this is all the way across and then I started down. Oh, pretty needle minder from Abby Topknot. So that was my start on Emily's house. Love it. Oh, <laughs> I just jumped into Monday and I didn't tell you when I finished stitching the end of last week, like from Wednesday to the weekend. We're going to blame it on the holidays, guys. Holiday brain has gotten me. Okay, so the end of last week, before I was, when I was like, oh, I was done with the homework. How about if I show you what I did for homework last week? Uh, School of Magical Stitches. I told you guys I was gonna do this one. It was my number four whip that was chosen in Ravenclaw, and I needed to do 500 stitches on Quaker Geometric Puzzle. So this is what I worked on on Wednesday evening and Thursday, and I think maybe even part of Friday it took me to get all 500 stitches in. And here it is. Look at that. So I know I did this, I put in this, I put in that, I put in this, that, and this one up here. So there we go. 500 stitches on Quaker Geometric Puzzle. And this is a perfect example. Like I did this whole motif and then I went and counted them up. And then I would like do this whole motif and counted them up. And then I did this whole one. And then I kind of knew like, oh, I'm at 440 stitches or 480 stitches, so I don't need that many. So maybe I'm just gonna do this small one rather than start another big one. So this is not, page one is not done done. But everything that's left, like this motif, is on page one and two. Okay. This, is this on one and two? 
maybe. I think it is. I think this is on this page and the page below it. So everything that I have left on here goes into another page. So rather than like stitch part of a motif, because like up here is this same one kind of flipped, rather than stitch like part of it, when I do it, I'll do the whole thing. Does that make sense? So this is almost all of page one done because as I work on these motifs, it's gonna go onto the pages around them. So that's pretty exciting and I love these colors and I just love, 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 love this. And this I'm stitching on a 32, 36, 32 count light Lugana with the called for DMC. So there we go. So that's Quaker Geometric Puzzle. And then I needed to work on something that someone had helped me with. Was it something that someone had helped me with? Yes. And I worked on for this one, I worked on, and I never have the color cover picture with me. I worked on my Autumn Drum by Blue Flower. And this is an exclusive kit to Acorns and Threads. I saw that they still have some of these when I was there at uh, First Thursday. So this is fantastic. This is a wonderful, um, wonderful little kit. I thought it was a heck of a steal because it comes with the silks. It comes with called for silks. You get this little card with all the called for silks. They're so lovely. And you get the 40 count linen, the whole nine yards. Everything you need to do it comes in the kit. And I thought it was a great deal. So I picked this one because this is the one that uh, Lisa, the Kindred Stitcher, held my hand and helped me with the one over one the day that I didn't know what my initials were. Do we remember that? If you don't, it's a hysterical story. Go back and watch the video that's titled The One Where I Don't Know My Own Initials or something like that. <laughs> she helped me with my very first one over one stitching and I put in these initials, AM, that are my husband's initials. So this is what I worked on and I did, I think that I needed 250 stitches. So I did my second one over one stitching all by myself without Lisa holding my hand and I put in my initials. It's supposed to be, well this says A and T for acorns and threads, but it's supposed to be your initials and the date. But it's now our very first wedding sampler. <laughs> It's my very first wedding piece. So that's my initials and my husband's initials now because I didn't want to tear out my first one over one stitching. That'd be crazy. So, and then I did these little motifs and started these little acorns here. So that's the top of the drum, which I don't know if I will finish as a drum. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna leave it at that. I don't, I don't know, maybe. Maybe Vana has a tutorial for doing a drum, but there we go. And I'm also hashtagging this, the squirrel sow for married in stitches is squirrel sow to stitch on anything with a squirrel. Turns out I have a lot of things with squirrels. I love squirrels. <laughs> okay, so that, and then that was the end of my homework from last week. <laughs> there we go. What else did I work on? Okay. So then I also worked on, on, set, on Monday evening at the little Kitsap Stitchers meetup. I also worked on, because I have no attention span, can't stitch on the same thing, especially border for three hours. I also worked on, not that one, I also worked on Turkey Bay. Because I'm trying to finish up my November 24 hours of cross stitch across stick. I only have a couple things left to finish up. And one of them was Turkey Bay. I wanted to start working on the interior because when I started it, all I had was a sad little amount of border. So working on Turkey Bay, plus it's Thanksgiving week and turkeys. So I did 250 stitches and there's my progress. I did work some more on the border. Like I had this border done and that, and then the little leaf stem, and that was what all I had done. So I did start on the interior and did that big, beautiful chili pepper, that's chili pepper, journal arts? I think it's journal arts, chili pepper. And then I did extend the border because I'll count off of it for the rest of the interior. I might work on that some more this week. This is just a really fun stitch and it's Thanksgiving. 
and turkeys in a moat. I mean, there's a pilgrim and turkeys. I need to stitch on that some more this week, right? Homework was a little light, it felt like this week, because I think everybody was pretty conscious of the fact that it's a holiday weekend, and I don't actually know how much time I'm gonna have left for stitching this weekend because the whole family's home. I got to go pick up Sarah, our oldest, picked her up last night. She didn't have any classes today, so I picked her up last night from her dorm. So she's home with us for the weekend. So happy about that. I'm gonna try to get her to go Joanne's with me on Saturday morning. We'll see. Uh, so I don't know how much more stitching I'm gonna get done. I have a couple homeworky things left to do. Uh, the next one is, so in School of Magical Stitches this week, you just had to pick three whips because the Horcrux, the wearing of the Horcrux needed to be shared. So you pick three whips and do 100 stitches in each. And then you can pick one and get 100, oh, one point for every additional 100 stitches you do, but you just needed to do 103. So uh, this was the first of one of those three. So Anne is on my 24 hour cross stitch acrostic. Cardinal Winter, and this is a new start. Uh, and yeah, so this is my start on it. There's my 100 stitches. It's the little bird house. <laughs> so there we go. So that is my hundred stitches. This is on 18 count vintage country, not vintage country mocha. I think just country mocha. 18 count country mocha Ada. That was actually gifted to me from Deborah at Stitch the Stash. I have lots of things that will go on this and this is one of them. So there's that and I'm using, I think does it call for DMC? Yes, it calls for DMC and a couple classic color, color work. So I'm using just the call for 100 stitches. So that started, which is all I had on my acrostic was there were a couple things that I put on there just because I wanted to start them. And um, yeah, so that's one of them. And then I think that's it. That's all I have. So I'm going to be starting. So plans for this week. I'm going to be starting Peace on Earth by Cottage Garden. Cottage Garden, I think. So I'm gonna be starting Peace on Earth. That's my second whip for School of Magical Stitches. And then the third one is Gobble Gob, because I'm gonna work on that tomorrow. I think I'm just, that I'm gonna work on tomorrow, maybe a little Turkey Bay. But, so I'm gonna work on those two pieces. So those two pieces will get some work, as well as Harry Potter book covers. And that's kind of all I have planned. Uh, and that I'll finish out my 24 hours of cross stitch across stick. And if you guys have not seen Jen Lee's Quirks and Stitches latest floss tube, she is putting together some kind of planner. She's gonna like publish a like PDF, like a printable file. Uh, and, it, and I hope she's selling it because if she's putting this much work into it, I hope she's selling it, I will buy it. Because she is a planner extraordinaire and she says it should be ready the beginning of December. So I'm pretty excited about that because I, I think our minds work kind of the same way and I think that would be great for planning out next year. So, because I think I'm going to, I am, I'm going to, no, I am. I'm going to do Stitch from Stash next year, but I am going to do a full on mania. So I'm going to have limited, an, a limited number of starts up until May. Like I'm going to do a birthday start. I'm going to do an anniversary start. I'll do the like Lizzie Kate monthlies the yearbooks. So those will be starts. But other than that, I don't think I'm going to start much and I'm going to have a start mania in mania. But I think that means I need to kit stuff up. Like I need to plan it and kit stuff up in the next few weeks. Is that cheating? If I like plan to do stitch from stash, so I just kit up all of mania in December? Seems kind of cheating, but I have, a, I mean, honestly, I have a bunch of stuff already kitted up, so it might not even have to be that much, which I would still be stitching from stash, right? Yeah, if it's cheating. If it's cheating, it's cheating. So, okay, so I've done my finishes, whips. The only thing left is stash acquisition, of which I do have a little bit. So let's see. Get out my acorns and threads bag. Next week is first Thursday. I have my train ticket, I'm very excited. 
Okay, so I did have a few things come in. Uh, the first that's in here was from Stash Unload. And someone had put up some of the Christmas Village Mill Hill kits, and I've kind of been collecting these. I have plans to stitch a bunch of them and do them as like some kind of accordion stand-up thing. That will go to a finisher. Because I have in my head how I want it to look, or like kind of what I want, but I don't know how to do that. Vana, maybe going to Vana in like 10 years when I get all these stitched, because I'm gonna do them on fabric. So this makes five, a total of five I have. I'm thinking I'm not gonna do more than 10, maybe do, I don't know. But I picked up Victorian House, and they had these at a pretty good deal. I think they were like $8 for the full kit. So Victorian House, uh, the Train Depot. I knew I wanted the Train Depot. We had a train that my dad put up every year, and Village Bakery, because I bake a lot of cookies during the holidays. I don't know about you, I bake a lot of cookies. So the bakery, the train depot, I wasn't totally sure about the Victorian house, but $8, I picked it up because there should probably be a house in your Christmas village. Like I think the rest of them are gonna be shops, but Victorian house. So I got those three. Um, I also, I had talked about uh, Cheryl the Wayside Stitcher did her D-stash. I got the things that I had picked up off of her D-stash. So I got this cutie little pattern, Blackbird Designs Patchwork Pumpkin. How cute is that? And that's small. I can totally do that. It's almost all border, people. Look at that. Look at that pumpkin with the little, and the brick house. Mm, so cute. I also picked up this little hodgepodge hearts. It's cute little small. And then the rest was fabric. So I got this piece of 32 count uh, Belfast linen in cauldron. I picture this plus. Oh, look how good that is. That'll be perfect for some kind of Halloween stitching next year. And then I also got, I I have picked up, I think I have bought no less than three <laughs> fabrics that are potentials for Star Sprite. I got this one. It is 36 count linen, um, hand dyed by Stephanie in Frozen Fractals. Look at that. It's like mint green. And is that that right there? That show it's like mint green and blue. This might end up being the winner, people, for Stars Bright. Except I feel like is that supposed to be do it done on 32? It'd just be smaller. That'd be okay, right? I don't know. Love that. If I don't use it for that, it's beautiful. It will get used for something. Feels like it should have some kind of mirabilia fairy on it, which I don't stitch. <laughs> but maybe. And then I got this 28. Count uh, Jobelin, I think it's Jobelin, Lugana, some type of 28 count even weave and bone. Um, and it, but it was a big old piece, see, look. Look, Anna, another big old whack of fabric. It was a good price. And since I had just bought, had I bought the fabric first or the patterns first? I don't know, those Blackboard designs that are one over one on 28 count. I just figured this was a perfect neutral and I could dye it to other colors if needed. So that's what I got from Wayside Stitcher D stash. And what else did I get? Stuff hanging on me. I also got, where is it? Oh, here it is. Have you guys seen Delicious Threads has their own website now? And she has a laser cutter. She is late. She has a laser. And she's doing laser like burnt. Needle minders, she's got a fabulous thing. T check her out, it's Delicious Threads. And I went over there just to check out the shop and found a needle minder I had to have. I'm gonna take it out of the bag so there's not a glare. So it's deliciousthreads.com, I'll link her below. But look at that. He sees you when you're drinking. <laughs> Cheers. How can I not? Had to have it. <laughs> Need to put that on a Christmas whip. <laughs> and then I had ordered these bags um, a few weeks ago and they finally came. This one is Annie Joyful Stitchers. This is her fault. First of all, they're so much to love bags, which I love, but look at this one. She showed it 
And I ran over to the website and she still had one. So I had to have it. Look, it's squirrels in sweaters and snails and mushrooms. How amazing is that? <laughs> and it's got a fun blue check on the inside. Matter of fact, I bought it to put Autumn Drum in. <laughs> so we're gonna do that right now. Look at that, Autumn Drum. Now that I've showed the project bag on the floss tube, not that, I mean, I would have put it in there to begin with. I just hadn't gotten around to it. That's going in there. Perfect. Squirrel sow going in the squirrel bag. Squirrels with sweaters and snails and mushrooms. I love it so much. And since I was ordering one, I had to peruse her like sale area. And I had had this favorited for a while and she still had it. So I had to get it. It's like scooters in Paris how cute that is and you don't even really notice so much as Paris on the back it shows the Eiffel Tower but I just I love the bright colors and the polka dot and the inside is rainbow polka dots and I figured since I didn't get a November project bag of the month from her then I could order two from her shop it's completely reasonable so that's it that oh no I lied. I also got these little rings. <laughs> they are three quarter inch plastic rings that I bought. This is funny. So I showed you guys the Primitive Stitcher Tarot card needle roll, needle book last week from Wild Violet. This is what she calls for to finish it is these like little three quarter inch rings. So I bought the rings to do the finishing and I haven't even started the stitching yet, but I'm ready. I'm ready, and I did talk about, but these seem kind of small. This is what she calls for, is three quarter inches. Does that seem like enough to hold floss? Yeah, it does. Actually, it does. That would totally hold a skein of floss. Uh, but I talked about doing little smalls. Now that I've done this, boom. I could totally make some kind of like, if you do a little small, I think I need to start stitching on 40 count to do little smalls and do like a flat fold sandwich, and it just then I could just, whip stitch on these little rings on the end and use it as a little thread organizer. That's my plan. That's what I'm thinking. Have I stitched anything like that that I will finish into that yet? No, nope. but I'm ready. <laughs> it's a sickness. It's a sickness, people. Okay, so that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. Already done the giveaway. So we're done. Uh, and it's time for me to go make some pies and cranberry relish hopefully my pecan showed up i always order my comp pecans from sunnyvale farms because they are the best pecans in the entire world seriously they do these junior halves that like you can just eat like they are they're the best pecans i will link them below too uh and but they don't ship until like after harvest and harvest was a little late this year and so i was really kind of worried and then i got the shipping notification and the pecans will be here today so hopefully they're out on the front porch and so i can make some cranberry relish and some pecan pie it's time to get baking so if you're in the u.s i hope you have a wonderful wonderful thanksgiving if you're not in the u.s i hope you just have a fantastic week and um, I will see you guys next week in December, December 1st on Sunday, guys. Where did the years go? Where did the year go? So hope you guys have a great week and get some stitching in and cheers. <laughs>